Can you hear me? Okay, cool. Good morning, all. Um, so, um, when I was invited to this event by dear sister, Dr. Nesrin, I asked my students and uh, friends what I should talk about. And I'd, I was asked to tell a true story. And this morning, I will tell you a, st a true story that I know the most. For a minute, uh, picture a little Turkish girl who spent playtime smashing up rocks, looking for the atoms inside, despite the fact that people told her that it was an impossible task. Her parents put a book about Madame Curie in her hands instead. That book settled it. She would grow up to change how we understand the vital patterns and borders of life. Now, in her first year as an assistant professor at MIT, she develops ways to understand what patterns in nature are telling us. She is an interpreter for a language without words, a beating heart, neuronal activity, peristaltic forces in GI tract, or dry patch of skin. They are all saying something important, speaking the, speaking the unique language of the body. It's a lexicon that's completely different from Turkish and English that's, that she speaks every day. But it's one she believes we need to start translating in earnest. These conformable devices are from another relic in her childhood memory. When she was six years old, she learned that her grandfather, who she never got to meet, died of heart failure at just 28. Even as a young child, she decided she had to do something to help heart patients when she reached the same age, 28. And she did it. By 2009, when she was in her 20s, she had received a Fulbright doctoral fellowship the first year the doctoral grant studies was given in Turkey. She traveled from Istanbul to Illinois to work on her favorite project of her, of her career so far, a pacemaker that harvests energy from the natural rhythms of the body instead of, instead of a battery. It was a boost for me and made me realize my own capability, she said, of the pacemaker project. I experienced that a dream can come true with enough dedication, time, and effort. You can actually make something that is originally your dream. You can touch it, you can feel it, you can place it on animals and see how it performs. Now in her research group, she's helping bring together a diverse cohort of researchers who have amazing dreams to implement. There are a mix of international masters and PhD students as well as postdocs in material science, engineering, medicine, design, architecture, all working toward the goal of decoding the patterns within us. She's, aware, she's well aware that the electric light bulb was not invented by a candle maker. That drives her to take risks and aim high. Personally, she aims to saturate her limited lifespan with memories rather than unfulfilled dreams. She feels like she has wings. She can fly to her home country, Turkey, across the ocean by plane, between experiments and faculty responsibilities, and meet those young minds, not limited to only girls and women, to tell them of her dreams and adventures, and listen to theirs. She also flies on her scientific wings and touches the hearts and skin of people. She knows that science is objective and does not vary with gender, age, color, ethnicity, origin, ideology, rank, or so on. She deeply believes that, independent of your field, if you do it with science, then it's a profound revolution. We need fearless and free revolution in each and every field more than ever now. And she believes that everyone could do something. A smile, a touch, a phone call, a Skype mentoring, mailing a postcard, sending an email in the middle of the night, organizing a panel, Giving a talk to talk, giving a, giving a talk to express yourself and be voice of others. Even though she's a big advocate of gender equality, when she does science, she does it just like a woman, with persistence and dignity for all humanity. Her biomedical devices are beautiful, colorful, sensitive, self-powered, multifunctional, exactly like women. Her long-term plan is to shape the minds of young people who will drive the future, 
According to her, these individuals must be logically brave, firmly fair. They, they must be kindly, think deeply, live simply, and generously love the science, their science, and they should seek to design economically feasible and socially desirable futures for all. Her long-term goal is to have a vigorously beating heart to pursue her dream projects every single day. While doing all, the source of her endless motivation is the father of the Republic of Turkey, Mustafa Kemal Atatürk. Because if nothing works, she thinks like Atatürk. As Atatürk said once, if one day my words are against science, choose science. He also said, for everything in the world, for civilization, for life, for prosperity, our true mentor in life is science. Keeping this valuable advice in her mind, she tries to fill her limited lifespan and she helps others to do the same by telling them, do not give up, listen to others, speak out, and be yourself. By me, by she, I mean me, who was born in modern and secular Turkey, established by Atatürk, the last season of Turkey. I thank you all from the bottom of my heart. I'm truly humbled and honored and beyond thrilled to, be, to speak out for all individuals who deserve a peaceful life on the top of all other rights. I conclude my speech with a quote by Atatürk again. Yurtta sul, cihanda sul. Peace at home, peace in the world. Thank you. Thank you.